Hi everyone, in this video this is just kind of a little admission that I don't know that much stuff regarding cameras and video stuff. Um, as you know I do a lot of photography, I do a lot of uh, photography blogging and uh, I've got a lot of cameras and I do a lot of video work as well. I do uh, video uh, professional videos for properties which I'll do a video uh, in the near future. But uh, some of the technology out there is just like like, why do I need to know about this? So so if any of you are looking through camera magazines or camera information, you just kind of go, what does that mean? Why is that handy? The truth is, a lot of the stuff you don't really need to know uh, in the end, uh, especially if it in terms of what makes a good photo, what makes a good video, uh, what makes a good capturing of an image. Some of the stuff isn't always that important. So for example, it's just on dpreview.com. And they've got this thing about the Panasonic GH4 against the Sony Alpha 7S, blah, blah, blah. And uh, there's a lot of stuff for you to read and a lot of stuff just either isn't important or is just technical gobbledygook that doesn't matter in any way. Uh, and, and so for, let's just say, for, for the bit which I probably know the least about, uh, this is the, the video, the com comparing the G4H against the A7S and it's videos. So here's the information which I know and which some of you might be surprised that I, I don't know about as well. So the first thing, max video resolution, internal, okay? First of all, you think internal. Is, it, is there an external? Yes, there is. You can have a connection that goes into the side of your camera which can go to a, a separate recording device. And there can be certain benefits to that. But okay, it's saying here 7K loads out uh, no, cinema 4K, you know, the uh, Sony is just full HD. To say just full HD is, is a very foolish thing to say. HD is still massive. HD is still what a 55 inch plasma screen TV will fill. Um, so don't think, oh, if it's just full HD, that's not that great. There's actually quite a few bits of research saying that you can't differentiate the difference between 720p HD and 1080 HD until you get above the 46 inch size TV on a certain given range of distance. Like in the normal viewing distance that you'd be away from that, the human eye can't differentiate the difference. And pretty much all HD streaming videos that you get, uh, certainly in the UK from the BBC, from the BBC is at the most 720 HD, not 1080 HD. So it's, it's something to just be aware of uh, when you're looking at that. Okay, the next one, highest bit rate. Again, this is something which I, I've never really, I, I understand, higher bit rate, more information. Got that. What it also means is higher bit rate means less amount of footage being able to capture on each memory card. Oh, so that's, um, yeah, great. Here, uh, the confusing thing is 200 megabytes at 24 frames a second and still 200 megabytes at 60p as well. So 60 frames a second. So does that mean at the 24p each frame, every 24th of a of an image is a far more detail? I, I don't know. Is it something which will actually help in the editing process? I don't know. Uh, the Sony uh, Alpha A7S 50 megabits per second at both again. So you just kind of go, okay, so it's only got quarter the amount of megabits, but is the extra, is the four times extra megabits that you're getting in the Panasonic, are they going to be obvious? Are you going to see them in the editing? Is it actually going to slow down editing because it's got to go chew, your editing software has to chew through so much more information. Again, that's something which I, I don't really know the information for. Um, and uh, it's a bit of an odd one. Uh, movie targeted colour modes. Cine like D, Cine like L, Hue. Not a clue. Picture profiles. Okay, you get that in pretty much all your cameras. That's like if you're taking photos, your picture profiles are like portrait or uh, landscape and stuff like that. Uh, S log 2, black, gamma, knee, colour phase. Not, not a clue what that means. Or, or of what importance that would be. Black level control. Never knew there was such a thing as a black level control. Master pedestal minus 15 to plus 15. Black level minus... Again, not a clue. 
don't understand what that means or what it relates to or how that's of be any benefit or is master pedestal better than non-master pedestal? Just words that are thrown out there. Luminance range. Luminance is your brightness and it's uh, like if you're looking at an 8-bit image, which you get on most kind of JPEGs, uh, it goes from 0 to 255. So that means there's two, uh, 255 levels of brightness from black to white that you chop it up into like black, a uh, little bit less black, a little bit grey, and then white. And you have that within every colour. So you have black, a little bit red, a little bit red, really red, pinky pink, white, yellow, same thing again. You know, so, so you've got 25, uh, 250 ranges of dark to bright or black to white with the colours in between as well. Um, but here you've got an option of 0 to 250, which I thought was what it all is, 0 being black, 250 being white, or you can get it 16 to 250. Five, uh, or 16 to 235. So snipping off the two ends. But does that mean that the black comes in earlier and the white comes in earlier? So effectively it looks like it's a higher contrast or does it mean it's just a greyer top end and a faded dark end? I have no idea what that means and if that was actually be in, of any importance and is it not something which you'd just really be dealing with in the editing afterwards. Uh, the alpha, no, cool. Audio levels, uh, audio level control, good thing to have, uh, minus 12 to plus 6 dB, again you're kind of, if you are uh, an audio person that makes sense, you totally understand that. It, but generally I'm like, okay, minus 12 to plus 6 dB, I don't, I don't, that's just numbers and letters not really meaning anything to me. 0 to 31, cool. So I'm guessing that's a range of 0, no sound recorded. 31, it's very sensitive. So if you're out in the field and you're listening to squirrels, put it at 31. If you're in a nightclub and there's a band playing heavy music, you maybe put it at 1. I understand that. Uh, next one, mic level display. Uh, so your mic, obviously your sound, and it'll tell you how high and low the volume is coming in. Optional, optional, fine. Sound output. Real time slash rec sound, recording sound, live lip sync. Don't know, don't know. Possibly need to RTFM. Peaking, two levels, three colors. Three levels, three colors. Peaking, peaking, I think is the bit which it tells you what bit's in focus. No, it's not what's in focus. Peking is telling you what's blown out, uh, I think. And zebras tell you what's in color. Or is zebra, again, don't know, not sure it's that important. Um, levels, colors. So peaking, levels and colors, I reckon that that must be the color preset so that you know if something's getting blown out. Zebras, something else. It's not to do with the actual African animal that's black and white. Um, although it does put black and white stuff on the thing. Again, if you're using like a Canon 5D Mark anything, and uh, or the 5 something anything, uh, you can get Magic Lantern, which is a little firmware software that you can put onto your memory card and once it goes into the camera, you've got all these things to play with and it's amazing. However, again, there's lots of things which you can fiddle around with and just kind of go, I have no idea what this does. So it's a real kind of learning experience through doing it rather than just reading stuff. So get the Magic Lantern and stick that onto your memory card, stick it into any Canon camera that does video pretty much nowadays and uh, and then you'll have a real life learning experience and you actually see if you actually need any things at all. Uh, markers, safety zone, guide frame, aspect, center, center, guidelines. So I'm guessing that's just lines on the actual screen telling you how to position things on it. So pretty much every camera's got that, uh, you've got like nine boxes you get in some of them or you just get other things. Synchro scan. No idea. Sounds cool. HDMI output. FHD, full high definition. 8 bit or 10 bit with a little thing. So 10 bit, internal recording not available with 10 bit HDMI mode. So. <sighs> confusing. So you can have 10 bit for an output but not internal recording not available. So you can record in 10-bit 
but it would only be on an external monitor. Uh, 10-bit meaning you've got more information in everything. Um, is it of any importance to the average user, to anybody that's watching my videos? Unless you're a cinematographer, I don't think anybody's going to know what any of that means or of any importance or whether it actually helps in editing or just slows it down. Um, clean HDMI output. You wouldn't want a dirty one. Uh, time code. Time code. This is something for all the videos I do, I just edit them in uh, Final Cut Pro or this thing which I'm recording just now, ScreenFlow. I have no idea what time code is or why it's of any importance whatsoever. Free run, record run, includes dropped framed options for NTSC something. True run, and then in Sony's got TC, UC, Unicode, time code, free run, rec run. Are these things which I need to worry about. I, I don't know, never, never really dealt with it. Time gain, display methods. Uh, seconds ISO, angle ISO, second decibels, uh, second ISO, so I'm guessing that's telling you how many seconds you've been recording for and the ISO you've got it at. Yep, colour bars, SMPTE, EDU, ARIB, oh I love AIRB, no ARIB, oh that's, that's important colour bars, no idea. No idea what that, what that means. Simple, massive, perpetual time expansion. Uh, not a clue. And the Sony, no. Uh, variable frame rate, handy. Variable frame rate, two frames per second for 1,200% speed, high speed, or, 50, or 96 frames a second for 25% slow motion. Cool, that's handy. So you can do like a super slow mo at 25% speed slow motion, so four times slower, or you can do it 12 times faster by doing just a single frame, single frame, or two frames a second for a long time. Um, meanwhile, on the Sony, no, through 720p you can shoot at 120 frames and 100 frames and then use the slow motion footage available in the editing software. Yeah, so that's, in it, that's how I do it. I always shoot at 30 frames a second and I edit it in the Final Cut Pro uh, so I bring it to a, to a thing called conform speed so that slows it down to about 80% speed so I'm found into a 24 uh, frames a second timeline. Whew. Yeah, so for me at the moment looking at the new cameras coming out I'm just going brilliant more frames a second Maybe a higher resolution. What's the dynamic range like? Tell me. Uh, that's all that's important. How good is the audio capture? But the amount of stuff which you could know about and which to some people may be of interest, but th th this is effectively a warning just saying, do you know what? Sometimes you don't need to worry about things too much. And sometimes having too many things and worrying about too many things and basing your opinion on something which is like, oh, this has got two presets and it's got 10-bit external recording and it's got free run time code so much better. No, it's not. Uh, sometimes ease of use, less options is actually sometimes a little bit easier and better for the general public. It's only once you really start going, oh, like if, if at any point as you were developing through your camera buying range, you went, oh, I need zebras, then Go get yourself some zebras. Don't go, oh that camera's got zebras. What are zebras? I now need them. <laughs> doesn't doesn't usually happen. Um, but yeah, just just let you know, you don't always have to know. Sometimes that's where reviewers will actually you'll you'll see things saying the reviewer will say, this camera, which is cheaper, don't have as many options, is the better camera because it's easier to use and it gets the picture straight away instead of having to have a faff around with a 200 megabytes a second, 60 frames a second when it just takes an hour to edit a two minute video. Uh, may not be the best thing for the average user. So always think about that. More options, not necessarily better. Bigger, faster, more megabytes. Again, not necessarily, not necessarily better. There you go. Hope that helps. Bye bye.